Okay, we're going to start with a general overview of the mill here. This is a Sherline Model 2000. Uh, I believe they refer to it as an 8-axis mill. Um, they do have a couple other models. Right now, this is their top of the line, although they did just announce uh, another model coming out that has a few improvements and capacity increases over this unit. Um, it's really hard to get everything in the in the photo with the, the mill without being very far away. So I've got most of it shown here. We're gonna go over the pieces we can see. I'll, I'll move the camera around and show you some uh, closer details and, and more information as we go. So starting at the bottom, um, again, we just have a, a base. Uh, the, this base um, also happens to be the uh, bed way for one of the axes. It's for the Y axis, the axis moving in this direction. On top of that base, we have a saddle, just like we had on the, the lathe. And we have a table, again, just like we had on the lathe. Although this is our X axis, we don't really call this a, a cross, uh, cross slide or, or anything along those lines. It's just simply the table and the X axis moves in this direction. In the rear, we have a, a column, and this column will rotate. We have a ram at the back here that slides in and out. Again, we'll take closer looks at all of these and the, the capacities of them all. Here we have one of the axes where this can rotate. Uh, so basically tilt left, right, as well as tilt forward and back as, as we may need to. Now those are, are items that you probably won't adjust very often. Um, but we will go over the adjustment of those. And as on the lathe, we have basically a bed. Now this bed is vertical, so we still we refer to it as a column, but this column does have ways on it. It has a headstock, as before. Uh, on the headstock, we have a spindle, and that spindle runs through the headstock and allows us to attach tools. So I've got uh, one tool attached right now here. This has a number one Morse taper on the inside, as well as the three-quarter 16 threads on the outside. Now above that, that's out of frame, um, but is, is very much identical to the way that the lathe looked. We do have a, a motor controller, speed control, the motor itself, and the Z-axis hand wheels. So let's get a little bit closer look at some of these items. So here we have a little bit closer view and can see some of the details on the x-axis. And I've put labels on the x and the y-axis as well as the z, which you won't be able to see, uh, just for, for easy memory and reference with some vinyl stickers. I do want to point out that there are a couple of things that are optional on this unit. Uh, this has a CNC ready kit, which are these motor mounts here and here. Um, I have also added the stepper motors themselves, so there are three stepper motors on this, and I have added these way covers. Um, this is also an option that doesn't come standard, uh, but is an option, and we'll go over a little bit more about what those do for you here. We have a scale on our x-axis that shows our travel from 0 to 9 inches in the left to right. Uh, there is another scale on the bed, and that's why these are, are semi-clear in that we've got a zero to, I believe, seven inch um, travel along the, the y-axis. On the bed, we have T-slots for holding down fixtures. So looking closer still, um, I've, I've removed the spring that holds this on. We can see now the scale a little bit better here, and the lead screw. Now this lead screw, as you can see, is bare. So it's, it's uncovered, unprotected, and getting shavings and things along those lines in here, as well as on, on the mill table and the bedways, are, are going to decrease the life of the product. So having some type of cover on there um, is a, a pretty good idea. Sherline is making a cover now, and I believe on their, their newer model that they're releasing, this cover is standard, 
but right now on the Model 2000, it is still an option. There are also some directions out there on how you can make these yourself um, from a few different people. Uh, here we have an, an oiler, which is kind of nice. So this, this automates some of the, the maintenance that we'll need to do on the mill. This oiler simply unscrews, and then you can put your light machine oil in there, and there are uh, holes drilled to distribute that oil to both the X and the Y lead screws. Uh, there's also a saddle lock here uh, that locks the, the table movement. Um, it's not really accessible with the cover in place, but if we remove the cover, we can see the, the screw there that will do the table lock, and then we also have backlash adjustment, and we have the adjustable gib. Now moving around again uh, to the other side of the base, there's a screw back here that's referred to as a lock, and this is an extended version of it that comes with the, the way covers. Um, but this, I've not been able to really get this to lock down tightly. In, in fact, it, it may snug up the movement a little bit, but with the CNC motors already on here, they're already producing enough snugness that I, I can't really tell the difference with that screwed down or not. I may disassemble it and take a look, make sure there's not something um, in there that's preventing its operation from working correctly. But right now, that lock isn't, isn't really working for me. If you are doing CNC, which is what I'm primarily going to be doing with the mill, even if I'm going to be manually inputting commands into the CNC, the locks are not as necessary because the CNC motors will act as a form of lock. Now here we're looking at the, the rear of the base, and I did want to point out that on the rear, there is a lead screw cover. Um, this is just a, a brass tube, and it actually extends through the column here, and as you move the saddle forward and back and the table forward and back in this direction, uh, that screw will extend out the back of the column. So you do need to make sure that you leave clearance back there for that screw to extend. So here we're going to take a closer look at the ram, um, and as you can see, I've got it set, uh, it looks like about one and three-eighths of an inch or so. Um, so I've got it pretty far back, which, which seems to be working well for me. Um, it can't go much further back without removing uh, some of these other items, and I'll go over what these items are. So here we can see that we've got anywhere from zero to six inches of forward and back travel on the ram. Now, if, if it's aligned 90 degrees, uh, this coincides with your Y table travel. This isn't something that you'd move dynamically. You'd move this, lock it down, uh, set all your alignment, and then you'd still just use your tables for, for movement. But it does give you some other flexibility and some other options there. Also here we have, again, kind of a, a nod on the mill, so a forward and back tilt. Um, Good for, for doing some different angle operations if you want to and you don't have an angle table, for example, or, or maybe the piece is too large to fit on an angle table. So you've got that option there. Um, here you can loosen this nut and that will free up the movement. They've included, which is kind of nice, back here this little plate um, which has two screws which hold it down to the ram. And then this middle screw um, is a fine adjustment, so you can tighten and loosen that and it'll press on the inside of this joint and cause uh, small movements. Uh, also nice for helping to lock down because it is a little bit harder to make these adjustments and we'll go over these adjustments a little bit later. One other feature on this is we do have uh, there are three sections to the column. You can only see the, the top section here and the, the beginning of this middle section. Um, I'm actually going to, before the next video, remove one of these sections and lower this down so I can get, get my cutters closer to the table. Um, but you have that flexibility here of adjusting the height uh, a little bit more and depending on how much clearance you want behind um, on your Y-axis. 
To adjust the, the ram, either in or out, or the swing, is a simple nut up here with a large washer. So this is another one of our axes, and this does a, a left to right tilt. Um, so this piece will spin, basically. Uh, and be careful when you are adjusting it, because you don't want, uh, as you loosen, there are four screws in the back here. You, know, you don't need to adjust these ones in the front. Put these four in the back. Um, once you loosen them, that head will just fall right over. It is uh, quite a smooth movement, so be careful and, and hold on to that when you do that. And we'll go over some, some tips and tricks on, on what's referred to as tramming or lining the head of the mill here in a little bit. And again, we see the, the ways up close here and the column, what would be referred to as the, the bed on the lathe. Okay, so uh, a little bit further up, we have the headstock, and the headstock does move up and down uh, as compared to on the lathe that's fixed. But here we can move up and down. It's the same headstock as is used on the lathe, so it has the same pulley. It has the same spindle through it, uh, the same Morris taper inside of it. Uh, it's, it's pretty much all identical in, in its configuration, as well as the speed control and our on-off switch. And right now I don't actually have that secured because I was changing pulleys around. Um, and then above that, you can just barely see the motor. So here's a, a more direct view of the motor. And the um, Z-axis stepper motor and the Z-axis motor mount and hand wheel. Let's take a quick look at the back. So here's a view at the back of the column. And specifically what I wanted to point out here is we have a, a lock on the z-axis and this lock does work very well um, it simply you can tighten and loosen this is also your backlash adjustment but it does function as a lock as well and then sneaking around here on this edge is the z-axis oiler and you can see the z-axis lead screw here so it does have a nice automatic oiler for that lead screw as well which is quite nice and then just give you another view of the, the rear here and some of the adjustments and the pointers here. Um, so you can see there's uh, an angle scale here as well as here. And then obviously you have the ram scale there. And there's another angle scale down here, although I don't have the, the pointers aligned on it right now. One other item that I did want to, to talk about briefly is the, the milling vise. And this is kind of a, a really key work holding item on here. There are other ways to hold items down and you can make your own custom vices as well, which, which a lot of people do and we may do in a video later. Um, but this is, is going to be your uh, really a go-to fixture. So this really should be part of what you get initially um, because you are going to need this to do almost any operations. And we'll show how we can use this to square off pieces and face pieces and do other items. I'm not going to go over all the same safety items um, as I did for the lathe. So the same, the same rules apply basically. We've got uh, a machine with rotation here around the spindle and we have to be careful of that obviously. Um, we get a more of a horizontal spray pattern for chips so be aware of that. Um, this can make quite a bit more of a mess. At least in, in my experience it, it's a bit more messier than, than the lathe. Do you always remember your safety glasses for that very reason? That's just kind of common sense, but it's uh, not always common to remember that. Um, another item to be aware of is that on the mill, instead of your workpiece moving, as on the lathe, here typically your cutter is moving. And some of these cutters can have long swings, such as this fly cutter here. And there are our, our larger units that, that people make. Um, and then this, this again becomes fairly dangerous. This is actually one of the more dangerous tools on either the lathe or the mill is this fly cutter uh, because you can't see where the end of it is when it's spinning very easily. And then one last safety note is concerning some of the milling uh, cutters. In this case, this is an end mill. 
Um, these guys are pretty darn sharp and there's not a whole lot of space to hold on to them, particularly once you're inserting them into the spindle. So be very careful about these edges because they are often knife sharp. Um, you don't want to be wiping them down with your bare hands. Um, they will slice you quite easily. So be aware of that. Um, these cutters, if they're from a good quality, will come quite sharp and uh, that can be dangerous to your fingers. And last, I'll just give you a, a little tease here on the CNC aspect. Um, one thing that you're gonna run into is these hand wheels are, are the same as on the lathe where uh, they turn 0 0.05 inches per revolution. And when you're working on larger pieces, which you'll frequently be moving uh, larger pieces around quite a bit on here, that can become fairly tedious. Uh, larger, larger mills will often have revolutions of, of 0.2 or larger, so sometimes four times the, the speed that you turn these handles at. That's where the CNC really comes into play. Even if you don't plan on writing full CNC programs, but if you simply want to be able to control the mill uh, faster and more precisely than you'll be able to by hand, the CNC comes into to play there. Now we talked about the axis movement before, but here I'll demonstrate we've got Z. And this is uh, moving the head up. And obviously we can move the head down as well. This isn't at the full speed right now. That's just um, a medium speed. I still have to tune the motors and everything on this. We have the X movement. And again, in both directions. And then we have the Y. Uh, basically moving forward and back. So, and I don't have this secured back down again yet, but I'll get that taken care of here in a moment. So I just wanted to give you a kind of a quick teaser of, of the movements there and, and what CNC can do to make your life a lot easier.